Good morning, B Sides! Lee! How's it going? Loud as loud as I Yeah! Right, I've got to keep playing that until you play it. Good morning, B Sides! Lee! How's it going? Yeah! For those of you who don't realise, that's Mr. Mark Carney, the person who's responsible for B-Size Leeds um, even existing. I really wanted, when we started talking about this, one of the things I wanted to do was say the first voice I want to hear is Mark. Mark was meant to be here to do sort of a little intro and to hand over and to sort of usher us in as a new crew looking after it. He couldn't make it at the last minute, so you'll just have to make do with my dulcet tones and no Persian poetry and all the other bits Mark's famous for. So, first off, thank you all for coming. I, I still, it, it now for the first time felt real. Um, yeah, up until now, it was just a stressful thing on the horizon. 15 minutes ago, we started filing in. It's like, my God, people have turned up. They, this is actually happening. We now have to make this happen. It's not just some sort of fever dream I'm having. Um, I'm not going to talk much this morning. We've got so, so many good speakers to fit in. The last thing I want to do is hear me ramble on for a bit. So, all the usual bits, bit of housekeeping. There are no fire drills today. Um, if you hear the alarm go off and um, yeah, just get out, it's it's a fire. It's um, We're not going to mess around. Um, we have a... Sorry, Nick. I'm trying to stay here. We have a code of conduct. Read it. It's plastered on the walls. It's on the rotating boards. It's on various bits and bats. It's on the website. We we um, B sides Leeds is one of the first UK conferences to have a code of conduct. We've we've carried that forward and we take it very very seriously. You're here to have fun. You're here to have a great great time. Don't screw over other people's fun and great time. Um, <laughs> Again, this is a wonderful venue. It's one of the reasons that we took so long to um, to get um, back in here after the pandemic is that we couldn't find a venue like it in Leeds anywhere. So please treat it with respect. The staff here at Ace, they've been absolutely wonderful. I know, you know, your hackers, it's cool, but look after the place. It's it's, it's an amazing building. Um, downstairs, obviously, there's food on at lunchtime. There's tea and coffee at various breaks on there. Avail yourself of those. Two settings at lunch. We do have, yeah, lunch, two sittings is very deliberate. We've put on very, very good speakers at lunchtime, not because we want to be mean to them and think, well, you've got a choice of speaker or food, <laughs> but because we actually need good speakers over lunch because we need to split that fitting into two. The capacity, the 350 tickets that we've got out there is based on this room. You'll notice downstairs is a lot smaller. If you all go for lunch at the same time, it's going to get very busy. So, we've got 12 and 1. Yeah, so one, one at 12, one at 1. So don't feel you have to rush for the first sitting. There is a second one later on. Um, we've all been out of practice at this. You know, we have not that many conferences gone. Being in a big group of people is a bit of a weird experience for the first time in a few years for a few people. So we have got a quiet room upstairs. If you need a break, if you need a little bit of a cut off, just go and chill for a bit. Upstairs, there is a, a room marked up there. There's an hour that it's not available. If you really need it in that hour, we've actually got somewhere all the way up on the third you can use. But um, yeah, no, you know, if, if you feel you want a break, that's exactly what it's there for. Um, sorry, you, you can tell how prepared I am. The fact that I wrote these slides a couple of days ago and I have no idea what's on them. I've not prepped any of this, so I'm going to read them as I go on. Um, we have to be out of the venue quite quickly after the closing speak talk so don't if, if you want to sort of hang around and chat don't feel upset that we're going to shift you out very very quickly the good news is the after party is just and i got this from mark just over there um you can't go that way you have to actually go through doors and things but um it's literally out the front door turn left and you should be able to see it. it's a place called aspire if you find yourself crossing a road that's bigger than an access road you've gone the wrong way it's literally all that so as soon as we've finished disappear over there I believe there's a bit of money behind the bar and things like that. So, um, so for those of you at the pre-sides last night, you might have had your fill already. I know I, I certainly don't really fancy another night on the beer tonight. Um, Wi-Fi, there is Wi-Fi around. Um, there's lots of any of the flat surfaces out there and just generally just random stuff there. There are details of what the Wi-Fi is. It involves you texting a number and get some stuff back. But it's a bit faffy, but once you're on there, it does work. Again... Our, our hosts here are gracious. We want to come back next year, so don't dick around with the Wi-Fi, please. And the same goes for Aspire. It happened at a security conference, not ours. We don't know what it is, but we, we assume somebody was playing with a Ponagachi or some sort of deal. But don't do that. We're grown ups. It's, it's not big and it's not clever anymore. Um, again, come and have fun. 
<laughs> but tell people the fun you're having. This is our first year doing this. We, we, we want to follow in Mark's footsteps. We want to put on something at least as good as he did. We want to keep pushing it forwards. So if you're having a great time, go throw it out on social media. Uh, hashtag b leads. If you're not having a great time, come and find one of us. Either one of us in the purple shirts, any of the guys in the red shirts. Um, so just not the guys in the blue shirts because they're the speakers. Um, feel free to go and, go and tell me you're having a shit time if you want to, but it's probably not ideal. But... Um, yeah, if anything's going wrong, come and find us, come talk to us. We're say we're we're doing this for you if we can make it better. Let us know. I say any problems at all, find sorry, I'm not allowed to call them goons, I got I got upset for that. Come and find one of the MVPs, yeah, one of the folks here in the in the red shirts. Um so when we were talking about the the, the people in the shirts, we, we we were trying to work out colouring themes. We'd done the whole red, blue and purple teaming thing and who gets what and the idea of red shirts being sort of in Star Trek terms completely expendable amused me. But, um, <laughs> but for whatever reason, I think it was at, at DC151, our local hacker group here, somebody mentioned getting the goons prepared and getting them trained. And somebody put in my mind the idea of Del Preston from the, the Wayne's World film. And it's like, okay, Rosie, I know this is late. Don't want shirts. I want everybody in, in, in the black waistcoats and the wigs. That's that's what we want for doing stuff. So we, we need to make that happen next time. Yeah, next that time. seemed like a great idea until somebody pointed out that if I gave him my glasses, me and Mr. <laughs> Mc, <laughs> me, me, me and Mr. McGreedy somewhere could actually um, actually pull off a, 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 a fairly passable Wayne and Garth. So maybe not. So anyway, the goons were the goons were around, sorry the, goons, the MVPs are around. We're around. Come and hassle us uh, if any, if you need any help or anything goes wrong. Um, badges, you've all got badges I don't know how many actually, I can look in around the room, I can see lots of stickers so that worked quite well, but in case you missed it on the way in we've got loads of stickers on your badges to indicate whether you're open to um, people talking to you about recruitment whether you just want to be left alone, whether you can be filmed or not, they're, they're there and for other people, please enforce that you know, so if you're, please follow that, don't just go and annoy people that are desperately not to be annoyed uh, nearly there uh, what we've we got in store for you I've been worried about this for weeks now, about, you know, it's our first time doing this. We've marked set a very, very high bar for us to live up to. Sorry, Nick, I'll come and stand back here. Um, however, that image is the one that suddenly made me realise we've done something special here. That speaker lineup is stunning. All the people that have been down at InfoSec this week, oh, it's been a bit flat, you know, the speakers are up to it. And I look at it, we have got some of the best speakers on here, and they're all doing it for free. They're all doing it for love. A lot of them, you know, the it's costing them quite a lot of money to come and they're doing that for you for nothing so I'm I am so proud of our speaker we've all <laughs> save that for the closing thing because I need something to talk about so we can do all the clapping about how awesome people is there but yeah we've got three tracks of amazing speakers we have got Three keynotes. When we did this whole red, blue, purple thing, we, we, we had the idea, it's like, oh, we can have multiple keynotes. Um, and we have got three amazing keynotes. They're, 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 it, any one of those would have been proud to have. The fact that we've got three are amazing. Uh, and we've got the panel later, and the people on the panel we've got are, is a stunning line of people. So, Mr. Carney's not on there. I, I'm not forgiving him for that. And if you're watching <laughs> Mark, you're a git. Don't do it again. Um, <laughs> no, sorry. Generally, Mark, I'm sure Mark would have loved to have been here if he could make it. Workshops. We've got four amazing workshops as well. Um, missing the talks, we've got at least Cooper, wherever he is hiding, has got an amazing team filming those. You can watch those later. The workshops, you don't get that chance. You miss them and they're gone. With um, three excellent villages again, um, Minty, if he's around, I, I say, Minty doing the car hacking village. Anyone that's been in the Grand's community knows Minty doesn't do the car hacking village. Nobody goes to see Minty. He he might be the one with the fancy job and the, the, fancy, the car in a box and all the things. But it's Biggie that actually runs the show. So go down, see Biggie, and if Biggie lets you talk to Minty about car hacking as well. Um, but yeah, it's if you've never done it before, that it seems monstrously intimidating. If you say, like, oh, I've never really hacked anything, why would I start on a car? But spend some time talking to Ian, because I did this at uh, Liverpool a few years ago, and it's amazing how much he can talk to you and how terrifyingly easy it is as well. And if you don't know, he's got an entire car in a box down there. He's literally got an old Peugeot 206. Well, not the body work and the wheels and the stuff we don't care about, but all the electronics is all set out there and it can show you how easy it is to tear apart. Um, lock picking. Obviously, lock picking has been a long time sort of stalwart of, um, of, B-sides, of, of B-sides. Again, if you've never done that before, 
go and give it a go. Um, one of the great, one of the great things at the Presides party last night was somebody very young that's just started interning at a, a company that I'm greatly. Uh, she went, oh, well, they lock picks. I went, yeah. Well, so, and five minutes later, she popped her first lock, and that look on her face of like, I've just popped my first lock. It's like, yeah, you're one of us now. We own you. You. But it, 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 it's one of those things. It, again, it sounds scary and intimidating, but actually, the folks we've got doing that are lovely people, and it's such a great, fun skill to use in there. Third one, battle bots. I haven't actually seen Ben this morning. I don't even know if we've got the arena. Oh, he is, he is here, is it? Somewhere. Um, he had to pick a lock. <laughs> <laughs> sounds very much like Ben. Has he set fire to anything yet? No, no, um, no. <laughs> so for those that you don't know, BattleBots is not a rip-off of the copyrighted other TV show of the same name. These aren't the big 16-foot robots that you see on telly. These are what they're called ant weights. These are little tiny robots. Ben's brought some with him. Other people have been building their own. There's a little arena that you can... I'd say a little... It's quite a big arena that you can go and watch and take part. And it's ace. And... Without going into too much of the backstory, Ben and Grant that organised this have moved heaven and earth to actually make this happen. There were some problems that meant it almost didn't happen. It's involved shipping a BattleBots arena from the, um, from the Dublin, well, so, so somewhere in Ireland, shipping it over here to make sure it happens. So those guys have done some amazing work. And again, it's all self-funded. It's cost them an absolute fortune. Um, and they've, they've got to go from it to try and keep BattleBots going. So go and have a play. And I encourage you, you know, throw some money their way because it, like all these villages it costs them not just the time but it costs them a lot of money to make this happen and they do it just to make you guys happy so go ahead. Um, so the, the three villages we've got on, on top of that and this is something that started out as a little bit of a fun extra and it's kind of taken over because I'm, I'm loving what's happening with this Silverfish is scavenger hunt um, we were going to do a CTF reasons meant we couldn't do the CTF so we said we'll focus on scavenger hunt I know Silverfish has done this before. Weirdly, I bumped into it in a slightly tired and emotional state at DEF CON at the scavenger hunt. It's like, hey, James. And it's like, what are you doing here? More importantly, it's like, oh, it's a scavenger hunt. Of course you're here. This is what you've done. If you don't know what scavenger hunt is, it's basically, it's a big long list of things you can do, collect, or otherwise, you know, sort of... Um, Vaguely what's attempt. Yeah, just, just, yeah. Vaguely attempted. Vaguely attempted. <laughs> is a good, um, and the, 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 the rules around that are very, very flexible. Basically, <laughs> convince James that you deserve those points. And lateral thinking is very much true. And it's great fun. It's not just a, you know, oh, go and get me a pen or go and get me a, a you know, a, a, an ankle sock. It's actually really clever, geeky stuff. And that's we've, we've seen the list. There is some absolutely hilarious stuff on there. So, have a go at that. James, uh, where is he? I've, I've seen him somewhere. Yeah. Where, where are you actually set up, sir? Where, where are, or are you, are you not for the... wandering around. So, uh, yeah, go, go go find James. Registration is via Discord. And the, so, but yeah, go find him and have fun. Because that is it's ace. It's little things that, like that that make these conferences to me that so easily missed. Or you can have, actually have so much fun there. Sticker stall is around somewhere. I think we put it up with the... Lock and yeah, up with the lock picking <laughs> and... Um, uh, um, Minty's, Minty's Car Hacking Village upstairs uh, for those that are, again don't know Sticker Stall is an idea that started out in Steelcon years ago and we kind of took it on the road and it's now grown its own legs the idea is we go around all the vendors and all the cool companies we collect their huge piles of stickers we put them all in the box and then we let you guys buy them back I keep saying guys sorry uh, people uh, <laughs> um, um, we, we let you buy them back for a, a charity donation and at the end of the conference we give all that money to charity it's a very very easy way of making a little bit of money for charity and it's an awesome way of making your, your laptops look even cooler than they already are also the flip side of that if you've got any stickers on you and I know a lot of you just come back from Infosec so you've probably got pockets full of the things chuck them in the box it all, you know, all money from that goes back to the charities um, Hulkon yeah there's We've got a big mingling area downstairs. There are vendors in it. There are people in it. Find people to chat. To me, the greatest parts of a lot of these conferences are finding people to chat to and having those conversations. And we've got a whole bunch of other random stuff that I won't talk about for people of a certain age and a certain level of geekery, i.e. me and Nick and Graham. There is an old BBC master. I was going to say, I'm looking, just looking around the room thinking, actually, there's a whole bunch of people that are going to get quite excited about this. There is a BBC master around. Have a play. There is something very, very special running on that master that came from Tom and um, Lee Taxock. So, and that's, that, that, that also, there's a, that ties in that to the scavenger hunt as well. Sponsors. So right, we're nearly there. You nearly actually get to listen to somebody interested in a minute. <laughs> um, 
we couldn't put this on without sponsors. Um, one of the things with B-Sides, the b- barrier to entry is meant to be as low as possible. The tenor we charge is mostly about making sure you turn up. We passed the point where it's almost it's costing more than £50 a head to actually put this on. So that £40 missing pound that is coming from those sponsors. Without those sponsors, this couldn't happen. And it's been a really, really tough year for sponsors out there. There are a lot of companies who have been over the last 12 months saying, yeah, we'll sponsor you, we'll sponsor you, we'll sponsor you. Then I've had to do massive rounds of layoffs and um, suddenly it's like, well, actually, sponsoring events is a bit, you know, it's not a good look for us when we're laying staff (laughs) off. So those people are on there are amazing companies. They stuck by us. They've made this possible. Some of them are downstairs in the vendor area, go and talk to them. Some of them aren't. Those are the people that are really helping and supporting this community. Those are the ones that are really looking after us. And several of those are actual fairly sizable local employers that good people I want to talk to if you want a job. And that's it. I'm now going to hand it over briefly to Chloe to talk about Pac-Man. And as the resident retro gamer expert, that sounds a bit odd, but it will all make sense in a minute. Okay, right. This is going to be really quick for me because this is nice and easy. We're friendly people. This is a friendly conference. It's always been a friendly conference. The idea of the Pac-Man thing, I think there's a guy called Eric. I could be wrong. But ideally, like, you stood in a circle, leave a gap for a new person to come join. Be friendly, make friends, be happy. Don't be a dick. That's all I've got to say. Just be nice people. We'll do a B-Sides. It's going to be great. And, yeah, that's it from me. So, yeah. So, thank you very, very much for coming. I would... Don't know how we're doing for time, but at this point, yeah. in, right? We, in that case, th- thank you very much. We can now go straight into well, if it, yeah. if, we if the AV gods are with us, because we were stressing over this a few minutes ago. We'll... It's going to work perfectly on the first attempt. Have <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. we got? Yeah, good. We're good. We're good. Worked perfectly on the first <laughs> attempt. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.